So my viewer, once again, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to this video. And I want to really thank God for you. I hope you have been well. The Lord has kept you. I've also been well. The Lord has been good to me. And I thank him even for this opportunity, once again, uh, for us to share the word of God. Uh, we continue to encourage you to support us uh, through subscribing to our channel sharing our channel to your friends and uh, watching more and more and may the lord bless you so much as you do that today i want us to discuss our second part of something that we have been looking at known as trusting the process trusting and accepting the process we began a while ago and uh, <clears throat> in our part one we took a focus on the journey and the life of a man of God known as Joseph. Now today, I want us to look at uh, another great man of God known as Moses. It is uh, what I want us to discuss and I believe that the Lord will guide us, the Lord will help us even as we look at this. I want to begin by reading uh, the word of God from Zechariah chapter number 13 and verse number 9. Zechariah chapter number 13 and verse number 9, the Bible says, And I will test the dad uh, that survives and purify them as silver, uh, as silver is purified by fire. I will test them as gold is tested. Then they will pray to me, and I will answer them, and I will tell them that they are my people, and they will confess that I am their God. Now, my interest here is the portion that says that I will purify them as silver is purified by fire and I'll test them as gold is tested. That is what I want to focus even as we discuss about trusting the process. And in our part one we said that God in his own wisdom has given us gifts and we have come to realize that we have those gifts. And at times we wonder when will the gifts start to manifest? When will the gifts start to bear fruits? There are times in our lives that God places a call and it becomes very clear that God has called us to do a particular ministry. But it appears that it is taking time. And my viewer, uh, we have observed that most of us, they do not go the entire process. They quicken the process. And at the end of it all, they fail to achieve the intended purpose of God. And that's why it has become very, very important. It has become an issue of interest to me and to you that we really need to understand why should we trust the process. Now, the Bible here is saying that I will purify them as silver is purified by fire. And I will test them as gold is tested. Now, that means that silver goes through fire. That means gold is tested. And uh, having come from a background of teaching, I really want to appreciate that no one can become any profession if you have not gone through training. You want to become an accountant like me, you must come and start at the basic level, then proceed all the way to the recommended final level. You want to become a medical doctor, the same thing. And even a child is not born and they start walking immediately. If that was to happen, it will be an abnormality. And therefore, by the mercies of God, my brother, my sister, I want to ask you to trust the process. Though the gifting is there, though the calling is there, and there is a lot of evidence, but as of now, there is no manifestation. I want to ask you to be patient and try to understand the process. And uh, in that, I want us to take a quick look at the life and times of uh, Moses in the Bible. Now, we all know very, very well about Moses, how he was born. He was born in Egypt, a time when King uh, Pharaoh wanted to kill all the Israelites. And uh, we know the story of how the mother uh, went to hid him uh, at the river and uh, the, the, the daughter of the Pharaoh came and uh, found him and he ended up in the palace and he grew at the age of, uh, until to the age of 40. We know that after that, he started now engaging the Israelites on how they need to live peacefully. And in one instance recorded that he found an Egyptian fighting an Israelite and he killed the Egyptian. But when the following day he came and found two Israelites quarreling, he wanted to make peace. 
And uh, in that process, he realized that the killing that he had done the previous day has already now gone public and he fled for his life. So I want us to look at that journey and get the four main points that I've been able to get from here by the help of God uh, that we need to appreciate the process. Point number one, Moses, or rather God, will destroy all your foundations that you think are required or are necessary for you to survive in the call. What do I mean by that? At times when God has given you a call and you want to respond to the call, we lay some foundations, we make some, 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 some fallbacks which we think that after I take up the call, in case things become uh, difficult, I always have a fallback. I ha always have a plan B. So you go to the call or you want to go to the ministry, not on the basis of faith, but on the basis of the foundations that you have. But I want to assure you that God will not allow you to start manifesting that gift to start manifesting that calling on the basis of your of, of your foundations that you had laid. Now Moses was raised in the palace. He had everything. He could he could have used the influence of the state house to do what he was supposed to do. That is to deliver the children of Israel. But now look at what God is doing to him. He's moved from the palace and he has to go now all the way to the wilderness where he becomes a shepherd. And I was looking at it and I saw it was a complete downgrade, moving from the palace, going all the way to the wilderness to become a shepherd, a place where you are not secure, a place where there is no food, a place where there is no uh, even housing, a place where there are not even people, you are just in the forest. But God took Moses down there so that he could bring down every human foundation that Moses had, every strength that he had. And then build, uh, based on that, God built an aspect of faith. And now we are able to see that in the first case when Moses went to, uh, to the field to create uh, peace, he used his own strength. He did not consult God. But after going through the wilderness, we now see Moses going back. After 40 years, we see him going back to Egypt. And in every aspect that Moses is doing, he is consulting God. So God will first of all bring down those foundations so that you no longer move by sight but now you start moving by sight as you serve or rather you start moving by faith as you serve God you stop now moving by your own wisdom but you start moving by the guidance of the Lord so that you can come to a praise my brother my sister that in everything that you want to do you will always consult God you will always ask God on what to do and I believe that when we do this we are going to experience great exploits when you look at the life of Moses you can see the many big things that he did when he began uh, when he was taken through a uh, wilderness and now he appreciated that it is by faith it is not by his own strength it is not by being raised and brought up in Paris but by faith by consulting God so may God help you and me even as we prepare our gifts even as we work on our callings even as we make them manifest that we shall be walking by faith point number two is about timing timing there is always the right time. The Bible somewhere says that God has made everything beautiful in its own time. Now, you may wonder why God had to wait until, uh, for a whole 40 years to come and deliver Israelites when they were already going through a lot of forced labor, a lot of slavery. But God has his own timing. And his timing is not your timing. You could be there and you're feeling really the, the, the fire of the gift, the fire of the call. You want to stand and preach. You want to stand and do the work of God. You want to stand and minister. But the time of God is not yet come. And when it shall be come, it shall come, you will know it. So God has his own timing. That that's why at the age of 40, he had to take Moses out of the Paris and take him to the wilderness, prepare him for a period of 40 years so that now he can come and use him. And the other thing that I was uh, uh, realizing, uh, which is now our point number three, is that God will take us through the process so that we can be fit for the purpose. 
so that we can be fit for the purpose. Now look at what happened to the life of Moses. God moves him from the palace and he takes them or he takes him to the wilderness. Then when he sent back to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel, uh, they have now to go back to the wilderness as they head to Canaan. So where Moses was leading the children of Israel, it was not a new place. He had been to the wilderness as a shepherd for 40 good years. So when he is leading the children of Israel, uh, he is not in a straight run. So God will take you through the process so that he can ensure that you are fit for the process. So what you think are trials, what you think are difficulties that you are going through as you try to manifest your call, as you try to manifest your gift, it could be the training that will make sure that you perfectly fit uh, the purpose that God has for you. Remember, God has called you for a defined purpose and he's the one who knows that which he has called you for. So he must take you through that training. He must take you there so that you will be able to take people there. Actually, someone said in the circles of management that you can never take people to where you have not been or to where you have not been told about. So God must first of all take you there so that you are able to take others. That's our point number uh, number three. Uh, point number four is uh, that as you work on your gift and even as you listen to God, it is good to listen to your seniors. It is good to listen to other men of God. Uh, in most cases, when we, 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 we realize that we have the gift of God, when we realize that the Spirit of God is so heavy on us, and uh, the church elders, our seniors, uh, they come talking to us and try to mold us here and there, we, we want to resist. We want to say that they don't understand God. We want to say that they don't have the Holy Spirit. We want to say that we have heard from God. But I got surprised when I looked at what happened between Moses and his father-in-law known as Jethro. The Bible says that Jethro visited Moses and for a whole day he saw Moses adjudicating the cases of the children of Israel for the whole day and he sympathized with Moses. And he told him, if you do this, you will not go far. Why can't you appoint able men who will be arbitrating on the simple cases and then they refer the difficult cases to you? And in so doing, you will be able to do it well and you'll be able to have time even to commune with God more. And I want to thank God because Moses heeded to the advice of his father-in-law. Jethro and he did that and the Bible says he anoint he appointed 70 men who now started adjudicating on the issues of the children of Israel. I don't, uh, Moses by this time when Jethro his father-in-law is talking to him he had come to a point where he was talking with God. God was talking to Moses face to face and uh, he did not now disregard the advice from Jethro because he would have uh, because he was talking to God. So it is my prayer that God will help you and me that as our seniors speak to us as our seniors give us counsel we will take a moment and listen to them they have gone the journey they have more wisdom God is still using them and God speaks in many ways so uh, my brother my sister I want to urge you by the masses of God that you come to a point where you can listen to the counsel you can listen to the advice of those who are ahead of you uh, someone said in academic circles that you cannot reinvent the wheel people have reinvented people have been there and God can use them so my brother my sister I want to ask us that we accept the process we trust the process because God can use the process to deconstruct our foundations. God will do it in his own timing. It is him who knows. Don't wait and ask, when will I start praying for people? When will I start holding big meetings? The time of God will come. Point number three, we have said that we must be refined so that we can be able to walk by faith. We can be refined so that we are fit for the purpose. And point number four, we have said that God can use our seniors so that they can also guide us. And it's important for us to be able to listen to them. So may the Lord give you... Uh, uh, patience, may the Lord uh, give you his 
uh, blessings and favor even as you continue trusting the process it has been good uh speaking to you may the lord bless you so so much uh, vigilant we will be doing that series and i believe that the lord is ministering and doing great things unto you so may god our father and uh, jesus christ our lord give you peace and grace and may the lord bless you amen